Hey guys, Finally Sleeps here. Today we're going to talk about various types of investments in the FIFA mobile market. Uh, target investing, program investing, long and short term investing, and manufactured investments, what they are. Uh, before we get into it though, a uh, big shout out to the newest team members at FinallySleeps.com. Raimondo, Hamza, Islamic Gems, Jamie, Politico, and Paul. And a big shout out to longtime supporters Kevin, Todd, Sheridindu, Christoph, Presateu, Cole, Darren, Renee, Rohan, John, VKFC, and Glenn. List is getting bigger and bigger. All right, so let's get into it. Um, target investing is buying players because you feel their value will rise over time. Um, but it's not necessarily just like you know an OVR or you know um, an individual team or a nation it it's about a, a specific player or a program card or something that gets released and you look at it and go well that's going to go up in value over time because people are going to want it, it might be a, you know accessible now but it's going to come back uh, this goes back to the beginning and yes I say it's like all the way back to the beginning uh, and you could make a huge profit doing it. Back in season two, for example, I kept a full list uh, for site members at the website of what I was buying and what I was paying for those players. Hundreds of players from golds all the way through elites and masters. Those were all target investments. Uh, was, some of them were short term, some were long term, and the profit was insane. And then suggested prices were introduced and target investing took a huge hit. It didn't kill it, but its validity went into the toilet just across the board for all investments. Uh, kind of like what's happening to Facebook right now. If, you, if, you, if you're watching that and seeing what's going on, it's similar. Uh, it's, you know, will the new iOS kill Facebook? No way. Too many boomers love that shit. My mother, for example, lives in Facebook like she's plugged into the Matrix. Uh, plus, too many people believe privacy is a thing of the past. That's, you know, thanks to social media, that's the way it is. So is iOS going to put a big dent in Facebook? Yes, but it's not going to kill it. That is exactly what happened to suggested prices. Uh, did it did it kill investing? N no, but it definitely took a huge hit in the validity of of uh, target investing thanks to the suggested prices being added into FIFA Mobile. If you're new to the game and you're like, what are you talking about? Target investing was the way we did, a, it was a long-term investment, huge amount of coins. Before you put a player in, there was no target, no suggested prices. That button wasn't there. We never saw any of that. Uh, that's the difference. And, and there's a lot of people that are still clinging to it. Like it's that last dingleberry they will not get rid of. Um, but target investing, is it still here? Yeah, it's still around to an extent, but it's it's a lot broader in terms now. So uh, sometimes you'll see a card come out and you'll go, well, that should be X amount of value. Um, and you look in the market and you're like, well, I, if, if he should be based on what I'm guessing, he should be worth around seven, 800,000, but I can buy him right now for 250,000. I'll buy a few and hold for his value to go up. That's what target investing is. The problem is because of suggested prices, the bot lets everybody know right away where the value is right now, what the bot is buying for, uh, an example right at the time of this video release is team of the year players in the first two weeks of team of the year not starters but the nominees that you were required for sbcs if you could buy them in the market you were overpaying for them incredibly they were incredibly high because they were needed for the sbcs but if you went to sell those players the suggested prices were really low giving you an idea of what the bot is paying for those players because they're already in the market, not the value that the player has versus the value that the player should have. There's a giant disconnect between the two of those. And we see that a lot. Were they investment opportunities because they were so high for the SBCs? No, they were not because their value is going to come down over time. Once the, the, there's more injected into the market and the SBCs go away, we're not going to see those go back up. They're kind of a pointless card. That's the difference. 
Team of the Week is another great example. When Team of the Week uh, releases every Wednesday, we see their values really high at the very beginning, and then they start to plummet when people realize that they can't sell them for what the suggested prices is. Their value starts to come back up a little bit. For for the most part, though, those players, it's Team of the Week. They get re-released at Player of the Month. They don't ever hold a massive value. Uh, can you make a ton of coins off of a specific Team of the Week card every now and again? Yes, but it's very rare that we find a card in Team of the Week whose value skyrockets. There are many other ways in the game to make a lot more coins than investing in a specific player when it gets dropped into the program like that. That is the difference between now and way back when before suggested prices. Now, there are players that do get injected that you can invest in for uh, long-term investment as compared to short-term investment. And there's certain specific requirements that do make cards valid over a long time. Uh, number one, position. Uh, if it's a card like a center forward, a left forward, right forward, stuff like that, um, definitely never going to go up in value. Uh if they do, it has more to do with the bot and the way the market works, which is a whole fishing thing, not an investing thing. Uh, strikers, wings, that kind of stuff, unless it's a specific card who's out of position um, or something along that line, or it's a skill boost that you, you may link up to something else. That's that's about the only reason a, an attacker or even a midfielder is going to see a giant jump in value based on uh, its, it, its position or its skill boost. But defense is where you can find target investments. Uh, defense uh, outside backs and center backs all have value. Right backs for the last two seasons have been some of the highest valued cards in FIFA Mobile. Um, elites and higher, not, not anything below uh, 80, but elites and higher, they have seen huge um, bursts in value specific times over the season and a lot of it has to do with SBCs late in the season that require specific positions but again the only time we have seen right backs uh, not a huge jump in value was a few seasons ago when the 343 diamond was the go-to formation which only had three center backs where that value on right backs was gone because the value on center backs was higher but that's, that's a completely different scenario. So right backs, number one, if we see an opportunity to buy right backs, I always buy right backs. Is that a target investment? Sort of. It's not a specific player, but that's more along the lines of what has happened now that suggested prices are here. It's more generalized rather than a specific player most of the time. Not all of the time, but most of the time. Second after right backs, goalkeepers. Goalkeepers retain their value, and the reason that is is because of their XP uh, ratio. Anytime you can get a goalkeeper 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 XP to coins, it's worth it over a long period of time. Uh, there's certain times when program players get injected into the market and they're all goalkeepers and we see them flood. And when you do a search, you can see tons of goalkeepers and they're dirt cheap. And you're like, I don't want this. I've already got a bunch of this player. You know, I, I can't think of any like Blake. I think it was uh, Blake from Fall Harvest. And we were like, why do I want to buy Blake? There's there's a ton in the market. He's the cheapest elite. Yeah, that's a long-term investment that is definitely targeted. He is a goalkeeper. You need to buy that because his value was three to four times what his XP is. And what I mean by that is if you train him into another goalkeeper, he gives 26,000 XP. So if you can buy him under 75,000 or 100,000, like three to four times what his XP ratio is, he will always give you profit over time. Now, it could be... Three weeks, it could be four months, it could be the end of the season. Uh, but goalkeepers always retain, retain their value. Now, higher-end goalkeepers, not so much. The reason being is once you hit a certain point, their XP no longer coincides with their value. You, it, It's 87, 88, 89 goalkeepers. The only time their value kind of holds where it is, it comes into rank-ups, uh, which is another aspect we're going to talk about next when you're ranking up players the value that uh, 
that you see on the players that you're investing in. You can throw anything in to any position as a rank up. So if you have a striker, you can use an outside back to rank him up. Goalkeepers are position specific for ranking up and XP. So rank ups do make a difference, especially when you start to see OVRs that we don't have players in that range. Right now it's upper elites. Uh, we can see values start to come in on those. I think most people are in the range where they need 84, 85, 86 OVR players for rank ups. But months from now, people are going to need 87, 88, 89 goalkeepers for ranking up their goalkeeper. Um, probably spring to early summer when people start to hit uh, rank 8, 9, 10. That's when those higher OVR goalkeepers are going to come into play. Beyond position specific goalkeepers, right backs, um, then center backs, left backs, and midfield, and then finally attack. Once you go beyond that, leagues come into play. Leagues and now chemistry groups because of the whole difference between leagues and chemistry groups. Um, that's where we're going to start to see values go up in these once SBCs are released. We have SBCs now and icons, but it's completely different than what I'm talking about. Once the SBCs are released and there is a definite point of com completing all of the SBCs, like last season it was Sancho. If we're looking for a specific player, a target at the end of the squad building challenges, it's going to give people a higher incentive to do them. Right now with icon SBCs, it's a specific icon that you want, or you can be doing the SBCs for the boost. Um, if you're, side note, if you're doing the SBCs for the boost right now, definitely not the time to be doing the SBCs for the boost. Um, if you need the boost, I get it, and I understand that elites are cheap right now, uh, but Later in the season, we're going to see another surge where elites drop in value again eventually. Uh, and at that point, it would be better to come back and target those uh, when you have a lot of elites that you're not using. It's just, just an opinion, a side note. But anyway, we've got SBCs that definitely shift the value on things. Positions shift the value if it's a right back or a goalkeeper. Um, the other big reason to target players nowadays is out of position. If they are out of position, uh, it's let's say we've got team of the week, star, uh, striker, Salah right now. Obviously, striker is not a big position for Salah. If we did not have team of the year going on right now, I would probably invest in several striker Salahs. Um, the only thing that, that's kind of holding me back on that is team of the year. There's too many cards that are getting injected. If that striker Salah had been released three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I, I would have definitely went heavy on that just because he's out of position. We've seen it in the past with big high level cards that are out of position. They hold their value because a lot of times people need them. Uh, it's it's no different than left wing freeze Ronaldo versus striker Ronaldo. It depends on what else gets injected into the market. There is a distinct possibility that left wing freeze Ronaldo could come back down the road as a high value investment if anybody held on to him only if we see a bigger striker get injected in. So people want Ronaldo in their squad. And right now they've got him in up top, but there's a point where people will say, hmm, if I had left wing freeze Ronaldo, I could put him in. The only problem is, is when it gets too far away from where that card was released and his stats no longer hold value, which is, an, you definitely have to take that into consideration. But a lot of the time when people do these uh, investments, they are looking at them for a short term. It's not a long term investment. If you're investing long term, uh, target investing in specific players is not the way to go. Target investing in positions, positions and leagues long term is definitely the way to target your investments. Okay, let's talk about mar uh, manufactured investments. Um, the best way to explain this uh, is to look at GameStop. Everybody is, has heard about the whole issue in the U.S. stock market about GameStop, and it is relevant here for this. So 
what happened was a group of people we're just gonna we're gonna dumb this way down to explain it a group of people decided to u- target a specific stock and they bought a ton of that stock at low value because there were a lot of other people that were short selling it and were betting against its value ever coming up so it was two part one it screwed over all the short sellers and two it was the beginning of a massive pyramid scheme to raise the value of one stock so they took gamestop and moved it way up over 400 dollars from like 12 i think it was at 26 dollars when the thing began to hit it was 12 dollars last season last year so as everyone jumped on the bandwagon to buy gamestop the value started to increase. People started saying, I, I made a bunch of money. Look at this. The values are going way up. More people bought. More people bought. People didn't want to get left out, so they jumped in on it uh, the same as everybody else. And then at the bottom fell out of it. And once we realized that we couldn't trade it anymore, the thing started to come back down in value. Will it eventually crash? Hell yes. It's going to crash, and it's going to crash seriously hard. That is a manufactured investment. GameStop's value never went up. The only reason people began to buy it and we saw the value go up was because people were buying it and saying that the value was going up. They manufactured the value increase. Now, this was done on purpose. Now, that's the only difference. What we see in FIFA Mobile is not a coordinated effort to increase the value of a card. What we see in FIFA Mobile is someone says, hey, this player is going to go up in value. I'm buying a ton of them. I'm buying them cheap. And then that starts to perpetuate. And people say, well, you know, Jim over here, he's buying a bunch of that player. I want to get on on that because if he's going to make a bunch of money, I want to make a bunch of money. So then the next guy starts buying them and the next guy starts buying them. And then people start talking about how this is a huge investment. We need to buy this player. And more people buy, more people buy, more people buy until the value of that player starts to go up because people are fighting over the available players because, hey, this is going to be worth a ton of money eventually. Well, as more people buy the card looking for this eventual value increase, they are increasing the value by the act of buying the card. Do you understand where I'm going? It's cyclical. So that's what a manufactured investment is. It is exactly like GameStop. More people bought, more people bought. The only people who make money on this are the ones that bought in the very beginning and told other people, hey, I'm going to make a ton of money on this. Maybe you should buy a bunch of these and make a bunch of money too. So if anybody is trying to tell you that they've got an investment, think twice because, yes, it could be an investment, but... The only reason it really probably is an investment is because they said it's an investment. That's what a manufactured investment is. The only people who are making money on them are the ones who get in the beginning. Can you make a ton of money on them? Yes. You can make a ton of money on manufactured investments. If you're in the beginning, uh, is it smart? No. I mean, there's two ways to look at it. Uh, one, can you make a lot of money and is it bad for the market? So it shouldn't do it. Yeah. Two, can you make a lot of money on it? Is it bad for the market? But who cares? It's just a game. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's your decision whether or not you jump in on those. Uh, but be aware that the value that you see, the increased value is more than likely only caused because other people are buying the same card. And that's all because of suggested prices. That's the big target investing that we see nowadays. All right. So we've talked about in investments. We've talked about short-term, long-term. Uh, we talked about uh, right-backs. We talked about goalkeepers. Pretty much the only target investing that I've, I've seen that I would promote across the board. Uh, so let's talk about guerrilla investing, which is completely different than target investing because instead of targeting a specific card um, or a specific position, guerrilla investing is targeting a time frame. 
So we're buying at the low end and selling at the high end. It is all about variety. It is all about the number of cards you have and the specific amount of cards you have. Uh, this is pretty much the cornerstone of fishing. The difference is, is what fishing is, is the act of selling those cards to look for their increases in value. Gorilla investing doesn't require you to ever put anything in the market. So right now, if you're buying elites, which is what you've been seeing right here for the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, is all these elites that are buying because of the values going, uh, the values are low right now. This is gorilla investing. Uh, do you have to fish these cards to be able to make a ton of money? No, no, you do not. Right now, elites are at a value range about three to four times what their XP is. And we talked about this with goalkeepers. Um, when elites are in this value range, if you invest heavily and then wait for their XP to coin ratio to increase to where you cannot buy elites for less than five, six, seven times their coin value, you can flip all of the cards that you've bought for their new value. We saw it over the winter in uh, silvers. If you bought silvers when they were a thousand to two thousand coins, all the way back to six, seven hundred coins a piece at the start of the season, turn those cards into major profit once silvers started to see a five to ten times turnover in XP uh, ratio from XP to coins. Right now, you can't buy silvers in my market for under three to four thousand coins. Uh, some OVRs of silvers, you can't get less than 10,000 coins. If you bought them when they were in the low end and held on to them and waited for the opportunity to see this increase in value and flip them over at this time, it's an easy way to make 5, 10, 20, 50 times what you invested. Now, it's easier to see 50 times what you invested on the lower end, and it requires less coins but more cards than it is at the elite or master level. Um, 50 times your investment on elites and masters is not going to ever happen. Three times your investment, four times your investment is definitely possible. If you're buying elites at 75,000 coins a piece and you hold on to them until we see a point in the market where you can't buy an elite less than 150,000, and trust me, it will be there. It's coming. It happens every single season. Uh, at that point, if you sell those cards for anywhere from 170 to 300,000 coins a piece, you easily doubled, tripled, quadrupled, even five times what you paid for all of the cards that you invested in. That is guerrilla investing. Uh, thanks to suggested prices, that's pretty much the best way to guarantee coins in FIFA Mobile. All right, I hope that helped explain a lot in investing. I've had a lot of questions uh, lately that are coming through on like Discord and on the streams about specific players and in investing. And I hope this kind of gave you a few tips. If you want to target a specific player or you hear something that you know someone's going to go up in value, do it. It's up to you. But uh, consider everything that I just said as far as position, OVR, uh, everything else going on in the, the market and in the game, uh, what programs are going out right now, what in, what in what's going to happen when they flip, where's SBCs in all of this. And is it an actual investment or is it a manufactured investment? And if it's in a manufactured investment, the value is only going to go up because everybody is buying the card, hoping that it goes up. Are you in in the beginning or are you coming in so late that you're part of the reason the value has already gone up? Hope that helps. Uh, we'll be back on Twitch constantly. Um, I think we're on there five days a week right now, 30 minutes before reset. Uh, make sure you check out all the links. Discord servers and discord.finallyasleeps.com is the Foot Mobile Twitch Discord where you can find me and you can talk to all the other streamers. Discordapp.com invite FM. That is the big Reddit Foot Mobile Discord server where you can get uh, about everything else tips, tricks, talk to some of the streamers, and more. All right. Thanks a lot. As long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making videos. 